often people think that data basically um, is the same as reality. Yeah? That if we have data about our behavior or data about, uh, say, the weather, uh, that it's like a, an objective fact. But in the end, data are also just like a registration of what we have determined to register. So, uh, and then uh, that can be actually an interpretation, particularly with behavior. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you want to register behavior, you first have to determine what, determine what are you actually going to register. So that actual choice already determines uh, what will be registered in the data. And then all the things that you haven't decided to register won't be actually included in the data. So you see that there's already a selection process at the beginning. And therefore, it's in the end always, an, uh, say, an interpretation or a representation of, of, of say, reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the, our like major main issue with this uh, like extension of the, the surveillance powers of the secret services is that now suddenly uh, innocent people will suddenly also become like uh, part of the data that is collected by the intelligence agency. So it's not only that they can, you know, uh, intercept like on a targeted matter the data of the, the actual targets, but actually suddenly our data not our data, but like data of like ten thousands of people may end up at, uh, say, at the desks of the intelligence agencies. And of course, they will filter it out. But it's already that first step that a lot of that data will be uh, or can be uh, uh, collected. That that will have an impact also on, say, our behavior. You will get it in what's known as, as a chilling effect. That the fact that you know that you may be uh, uh, that your online communications may be collected and may end up. Uh, in the, say, the database of the intelligence agencies may already affect your uh, behavior. And then people will say, well, but I've, I have nothing to hide, like I'm not a, mm -hmm. a terrorist or I'm not a threat to society. Um, but particularly people that may be a little bit more, say, on the fringes or have maybe a, an opinion that is not the majority opinion, they may start to think like, oh, well, maybe I sh should keep my head down low. So that, you know, that, that chilling effect is a very worrisome uh, you will think twice before you may actually say certain things. Yeah. And actually, you know, an open, like, democratic society, we actually want a robust debate where people can also say things that are not necessarily, say, the, the majority opinion. So first of all, I want to clarify that it's not that the intelligence or the secret services actually want to collect the data of, like, everybody in the Netherlands. That's not uh, uh, the case. Uh, and... Uh, I think the way you want to protect yourself is that uh, the legislation puts certain boundaries on the powers of the security services because protecting yourself through technical means is going to be very hard. I mean, mm -hmm. I, you know, it's like a fight between or David and Goliath, like mm -hmm. they will have so much more means to and technical knowledge than you as an individual. So if you're an actual target, they will be able to get to you, whether it's through hacking or through other means, they will be able to do that. Um, and I think the way we should protect ourselves against abuse is by having a good institutional framework that kind of mm -hmm. provides checks and balances, and that is still lacking according to us. <laughs>